Hey, Anthony here from the Best in the West. This is a good one. I think you guys are going to enjoy this. This is the last part of that San Pedro job I did. This is the driveway here. We took all the pavers out by hand. Javier took them all. He took a couple trailers home. I took a bunch of them. They're all in good shape. So we didn't have to demo them or throw them away. And we're going to string line here. We're going to reset the elevations because there was a planter right where Milton is setting the string. And we're going to pour it from um, wall to wall. In between, we're going to set the forms in between the um, 4x4 posts and just leave them in there. We're just setting all this up. Once we get the driveway set, we poured it in three I had two pours. I was going to do it in three pours. Javier wanted to do it in three. So, you know, these are sweet jobs like this. This 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 was a nice job. I'd like to find more of these. I just bid some floating steps that would have burned the internet down, but I guess I didn't get them. I was a little bit too expensive, but... I'm going to find a set that's really crazy with like 15 of them in it and then jogs and turns. The one I was going to do went up about eight steps and then it jogged to the right and then it was three inches of glass that you walk into the house in. It was it would have been crazy, but some things work out. That's Don't get discouraged when you bid. Know your worth and price it for what you want it for and stick to it, you know. The guy didn't try and bring me down. It was just flat too. He just flat thought I was too expensive, but... There's not very many people. I do a lot of specialty stuff, and I know the going rate for it because I said it because I'm one of the few guys who do it, and I do regular jobs like this, so I know the degree of difficulty and skill you need to be paid for. So just keep that in mind. If you're doing really skillful, out-of-the-norm stuff, you got to be paid for it, specialty jobs. I brought out the saw, the uh, rebar cutter. I had it in my um, garage forever. We just never brought it. I just never bring it out. Because I'm usually in my truck with my tractor and all the hose in the back. And I don't like throwing the crap in. Because I'll walk in stores and I'll leave everything in the back of my truck. And I don't want to get something ripped off. I always forget to throw it in the cab. It makes it, makes it really easy. You can cut like 8 or 10 of them. See, there's the 2x4s right there. How we set them in between the 4x4s. They're obviously locked in. They're not going to come out anywhere. You're not going to get them out. So you just leave them in. But he wanted to widen his driveway a little bit. There was a little planter. There were some trees up and along there we, we pulled out. You want to just continually to get better at what you do and put the best work you can possibly do. And um, the young guys are lucky, man, because they got YouTube. They got one. I was doing it. Whatever you saw in front of your eyes, that's how you learn. That's what you saw. There was no YouTube, cell phones when I started. So these guys have a big advantage. I think the younger guys could take it to a new level and uh, um, go farther. I think the, the next generation of millionaires will be tradesmen because I don't see any young guys out there doing it at all. You know, and you can learn a lot of stuff off YouTube from whatever area you're in because obviously there's different applications for um Wherever, geog wherever you live, they, they do it differently for different reasons, you know. And when I first started watching YouTube, I was a little hard on some of them. But I didn't understand, you know, I would have to apologize because I didn't understand um, freeze and, and the weather they were dealing with. Some of these guys that call me from all over like, oh, it's 84 today and the next day it's like 50 and it's pouring rain. The weather's really consistent out here. It's a huge advantage to get to a, do, do make your work look like a different level because you can set it up and pour it. You don't have all these deterrents all the time. And, you know, the work's hard enough as it is, but wrestling the weather and it's just nuts. I didn't realize it. I've never been in any of those states in the winter, but I shouldn't have assumed, you know. So anyway, there's a, we went and got a, a clean, that's for the clean out. So we just got a round one and put it over and we'll just set it at the level so if they have to snake the drain, it just has a little cap you pull off of it. Snapping all the string lines here. There's the porch we poured. I did it in three pours, so sometimes you'll see it poured. Sometimes you won't. It's hard to cut it up and, and dice it up and, and edit it. But I got a really cool one next week, too. A, a, a tight, tight yard. Like I was saying, depends in different areas. Like a lot of guys you'll see on YouTube are in open areas in different states that are posting it doesn't seem like very many California guys post. They're maybe from uh, Midwest and East Coast and all over, but they got a lot of. They have a disadvantage with the weather, but their their um, openings and their demos and stuff and their pours are really easy. Everything out here is not that way. So when you learn how to pour this way, this is how we pour it. There's my bro Jose, Milton, Jonathan. 
that Jose can cut some joints. You'll see this. See, when you tackle a job like this, it's like 14 yards and there's no access to get out there to cut the joints. How are you going to broom it? You can't broom it long ways. So when you deal with it all the time and that's the norm, it's not that big of a deal, you know. But if you're in other places and you're trying to do it and you're not used to it, there, it's not going to be as good. But the, we do it like this. If you go through my videos, it's normal <laughs> to have no access. The The real estate's such a premium here per square foot that stuff is just stacked on top of stuff. It's pretty long. It looks it looks longer than um, than it is. The videos make it look way bigger than what what it really is the the driveway here i am just chucking the hose out i got an easy job it's like 125 feet of hose i mean this is cakewalk that's another asset every single concrete guy out here pumps their their jobs are pumped not not necessarily that they own one but every job they do they order a pump nothing's wheelbarrow nothing's because the faster you get it down the better product you're going to have because you can do all the real stages you need to you can bowl float it you can Fresno seal it up. You can get out there with a funny trowel and hit it, and then you could slide it twice or three times, clean the joints. That's why it's so pristine and everything's so crispy that we do. But I'm getting this down like this driveway. I'll get this down in 15 minutes, literally. You know, no mess. That's Silvestri. He came out from YouTube. He bought a pump. Same pump I have. Really nice pump. And I was teaching him how to pump and showing him all kinds of tricks and, and different stuff. A lot of people come from my um, jobs. Almost every job, people are out there from YouTube. But some people are shy and don't want to be on camera for whatever reason, which I just respect that and don't put them in it. He didn't care. Most of them don't, but yeah, whatever. Rolling it out and clamping it to practice it's a good idea because it, when you're, it's awkward, it's really strange. It looks like it's easy the way I'm doing it. And then when when you try it, it's a whole different ballgame. And then when it's plugged up and it's, and it's full of concrete. It's a it's a whole different ball game trying to reclamp it up and get it going. But I mean, I pulled I poured those uh, short load trucks when I first started pumping those volumetric trucks. Some people call them we call them short load trucks, and those things are as sketchy as you could pump. That is some junk mud. Because if the guy's running around all day doing two days two yards here, three yards there, five yards there. If he puts his rock gate where it's supposed to go in a cement, it won't all come out even. He'll have a bin full of half a rock, and the sand and cement will be gone. Oh. So they cut the cement back. I know the gauge is on them, and they bump the rock gate up. So I just go over there and pull the rock gate back down where it goes and say, dude, you better leave it right there. You're going to have a problem. Because if I plug this, if you plug me up, you know, so I would just straight up tell them, set your rock gate where it's supposed to. But I knew what they were doing because they had other jobs. And they'd have to go back to the yard and they'd, they'd have to reload the cement and the powder's where all the money's at. So they're bumping the rock up, cutting the powder back. And you could see it, but when you pump those trucks, I'd make them put like two wheelbarrows first and I'd look at it. So I said, no, nope, that's not do another wheelbarrow until I liked it. But I pumped those things for about two years, those trucks specifically. There's a channel drain we put in. There was no drain before. It was like a two by four against the garage, I mean, against, excuse me, against the, the uh, garage floor, and it would hit, the water would hit that and go out around the corner. So I just put a channel drain in and piped it around the corner, and it just shoots down the yard. Because there's no curb or nothing to court to to drain it to. It's just an alley behind the house. It's not going onto somebody else's property. Out here, you can't drain water or slope it towards somebody else's property. So I'm just smashing this down. This is just basic pump job i mean it's it's these are beautiful jobs driveways and patios are probably the easiest best money on residential you know and guys starting out too also you just know what virtues god gave you what your strong points are and go with that if it's leadership get a crew and do the pr work and marketing if you're strong and you like laboring finish and do all that whatever you you're you're made for that's what you need to do and then you can put it all together as you get older you know but out of the gate just do what do what your strong suit is. That's Milton and his brother. His brother on the right's new. He hasn't been he he hasn't been finishing more than five months probably, or well, he just started getting out there. So on a straight driveway like this, we I just said just throw him on the board on the screen too. You know, and I got Milton and and Jose with me who are two aces. So 
they're watching it. This was over a load, so we had to get a cleanup on it, a couple yard cleanup. Which you gotta bid those because those cleanup prices are, are just ridiculous. You know, and I poured it really thick down by the bottom and ironically I got a crack right off that drain, right to the right, right there. I mean is a I couldn't believe it. I wasn't happy about it, but what can you do? I mean sometimes it's so volatile. And this was all the right elements, the right weather, the right compacted base, the right mix. Everything, everything was was done right, and it, it still cracked off that off that drain. But I banded it all up, and if I joined it off the corners off of that, it would have just not looked right. So you just roll the dice with go with what aesthetically looks better, and go with that. <laughs> I mean, that's what the customers want. And I ask them. See, we're just hitting a Fresno with it while he's got access as we're going. We both float it as we go, seal it up. It's good to go. This is a three thousand straight cement, no fly ash. This is one of the jobs where they brought those those stealth fibers and it just it just um you couldn't finish it right. You couldn't broom it right. Well, you couldn't do the finish I wanted to on it. You know, I wanted to broom the center and, and, and um trial the trial the bands. But we had to broom it wall to wall because of that. Fighting those things are just it's not even worth it. So we do it, a guy on each side, screed it down, just knock it down. It's not like a blow and go, just just keep pumping and keep going with one guy in the middle, hitting the low and high spots. If I'm on and um, I'm feeling it, you don't need a shovel guy or nothing. I just do it, me and two guys, two of the guys on the stick. Sometimes I'm not paying attention, though. I'm thinking about something else and it's, <laughs> you need a shovel guy. But if you're on your game, you could do it easily. There it is there. There's what it's starting to look like. You can see the slope on that. Water just jams to that drain and it's gone. He's going to make a workshop out of the garage. But if you're young and, and you get into this, I mean, I think it's going to be the next wave of millionaires coming because there's not going to be enough tradesmen. There's not going to be no one to do your plumbing, your concrete, etc. You know, there, I don't see any young people in all the jobs I'm on. Rarely. I, I don't know. They're not interested in it like the internet and the cell phones are like socially retarded or something they want to stand 10, away, 10 feet away from you and they can't even have a conversation they want to text you it's, it's weird the generation with the electronics and stuff that happened it wasn't like that when i was growing up you had to get up there and go but things are a lot more expensive now i've said it before i don't know if i would have made it starting in this era with the prices of stuff the prices of rent housing you know and I was single when I started, and I didn't have kids, so it's a big advantage. With kids, I don't, I wouldn't have took the risk. I would have took a, a solid, regular job, probably. See, we're just smoking this with a pump. With a pump, there's no mess. There's no plastic. It's really clean. It's really sweet. It's the only way to go. And you've obviously seen me do them i mean staircases and stuff jaded stuff that's not even accessible if you can't do what the way i do it with the jobs i do then it's not a better way it's it just it's just the way it is whether some people like it or not or some people's in denial it's just the way it is <laughs> i'm not trying to convince anyone of anything knock yourself out go get a motorized wheelbarrow i don't care i'm just telling you this is how you do it it's a better way of doing it. You know, it's just like on um, my S70 and I go in backyards and take pools and, and stuff and people are talking about stand-ons and <laughs> I value my life more than getting on some piece of crap that dangerous with no rollover protection and flipping that thing over because on a 70, you got to be talented. The balance point on it's really sketchy. And um, I'll go in pools, demo pools out. I'll slide in backyards, break out 10-inch concrete, two three foot foundation footings i'll blast right through it and if you can't do that with a stand on you can't go demo a pool then it tells you it's not as versatile it's, which therefore it's not as good it's not hard to figure it out i've never even seen a stand on before out here i've never personally seen one any concrete guy with one i've never seen a georgia buggy in my life out here but it's a different way of where you live and how they do it and the thing does work the buggy's good in some areas, and for a lot of applications, people do that I've seen on here. There's no reason for the level of jobs and what they're paying to buy an $80,000 pump. It works fine, and they're making a living doing it. I'm not saying that, but 
trucking 30, 40 yards up and down a driveway with, with that, I mean, that stuff's going off on you. There's there's no way you can keep up with it. You're always going to be behind, behind the gun. And they don't have networks of finishers like they do here. Like, only they finish six days a week, you know, for different contractors. They're just freelance. It's ran different out here. Here's the pump here washing it down. I run about three hoppers, about 90 gallons out of this. And that's what you got to do here. You got to get up on a fence and bull float it and cut joints from up there. This guy's super talented. This guy cut. This guy will cut all these joints himself. He'll ban the whole driveway. You guys have seen him on some of my jobs. He did that one diamond groove backyard by himself. He diamonded the whole thing with no access. I mean, if people are talking about finishers or level of work, I mean, come on. I mean, this dude's standing up on a fence. He had to do the whole thing that way. I mean, how else are you going to do it? Because you got to go opposite way from the way you screeded it. You can bull float it as you go. Go 10, 15 feet, stop, let the guy get in there and bull float it, pump again. That's also, you know, some ways I've seen guys do it. But he just, just keep going and he's going to get up on the on the wall, on the fence. So my day's done, basically. I'm just going to be hanging out, putting this away. So I'm just winding the hose up and um, my day will be done. See the houses here? They're like 19... 20 to 1925 they were built it's a really old neighborhood they're really cool looking they're different than from down in huntington where i live san pedro is an old city so i'm just rolling all this up he's helping me out uh Silvestri, we're gonna put this away and we pumped it about a five five and a half so the concrete goes pretty quick you don't want to get it too dry because you got to cut all the bands and stuff and you got to get up on the wall and clean around the drain it's got to be really detailed you know, and if anyone wants to start in this, I would start, I started with a pump originally, that's what I did, and then I bought a Bobcat, and I had a couple, two, three dump trucks, 10 wheelers, and, but you could start with an S70 and a breaker and just go around to other contractors demoing out of backyards in tight spots, because that was my forte, I was in, I'd go in the tightest spots or, or jobs where they're like, oh, I don't have, I can't get in there, and you can go in there and charge a premium with a much smaller tractor than a big tractor. But if you're doing big jobs and parking lots, obviously the 70 and the little one's not going to work. So depends which way you want to go and what you want to do. But I would start off as a service before a contractor because then you'll see every contractor around and you'll know. Basically, that's how I learned. I had never done construction before. I just bought a pump and let it rip. And boy, did I let it rip. I was pumping six days a week. And in the first year, I had, I think, two other, three pumps total. I started off with one within a year, year and a half. I had three. Then I had a fourth. And then trying to find a fourth guy was just crazy. So I just parked that as a backup. But the most pumps I ever ran every day was three. I never ran four at a time. I just kept it as a backup, and then I ended up selling it when 08 hit. Mud was really nice. It was good. I don't understand, but... We still got a crack off of it. And we put a ton of joints in this. There he is. He's up on the wall. He's going to cut them all and band them. That's an eight-foot cutter. You can get that at Fantastic Tools on La Habra because a lot of people are calling me or writing on here. Where do they get their stuff? They get it at Roseboro Tools, which they just moved to Santa Ana, or Fantastic Tools out of La Habra, which Fantastic Tools is cheaper, I think. That's where a lot of guys go, but that's where they get all their poles, all their all their tools, everything. Like a lot of people in other states, they don't face the stairs and strip them that day and face them. You can just get an upper step tool and, 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 and face them that day, and they will come out plush. It's a big difference. You know, if you just strip it and face it that day and hit it with that tool and rub the front of it out, because it's all exposed. Anything exposed, I like to, I like, you got to finish. This is a talent in itself, getting up on that wall and cutting these. <laughs> you can't screw that up. <laughs> you got to get out there and straighten it out. Better be straight, bro. No, this guy, this is what he does, is cut joints. <laughs> Literally. He's a joint cutter. But these, this job came out really nice. We poured a garage... A patio with a curb because the garage was leaning so I shorted up with a curb front entryway sidewalk side of the house 
And I got some other stuff I'm bidding and some cool stuff coming. I went after some real high-end stuff, but um, I guess I'm pricing myself out a couple of them. But the d degree of difficulty, the distance from my house, you know, that's what I, I put in account too. So he's already got it all banded and all cut up all the way down. We're just waiting on the cleanup because we came up short. That's where 10 yards got us. That's the original cut there. That's You want to cut them about an inch per four inches, you know. And that's why when you see these these other tools on here and they're cutting in it and it's like a half inch, I mean, you're not doing it right. <laughs> it's going to crack right next to the joint. You got to cut it in there. That's how you, you see them with these little Cadillacs that don't weigh anything and they got four poles cutting them across. So, you know, we're cutting them straight. It's only cutting it a half inch. It's not this is an inch, inch and a half. I think the first cut's an inch and a half. And then the planer they run through is an inch. And then the and then the final pass is a half inch radius, I believe. So you can get up on stuff and, and hit it every which way. There you there's a way to do it. Even if there's no access, you just gotta you know, you might have to do another pass on it to clean everything up once you get the tracks laid. You know. Four guys the driveway you know you need four guys on 12 yards on this because of the access here we go we're gonna shoot this down just want this dry as possible whatever they brought it out that's what we just leave it at so it'll catch up with the um and it wasn't gone long enough where we had to shovel the it down where Milton's at for a cold joint there's no cold joint there it wasn't there that long we just round tripped him because it cal to where a load would have got it but down down by the drain and stuff, it was poured a little bit thicker, so I knew it wasn't gonna it wasn't gonna make it. So I told him you're gonna have to round trip. And he called and see if one of his buddies was at the plant to load him right then, but there wasn't, so we just round tripped him, which is no big deal. This job came out sweet. I should be putting up some real custom stuff. I wanted to get those um, floating steps I was gonna do, LED strip lights and all that in it. It was gonna be pretty crazy it was in San Clemente overlooking the beach on a hill on a on the top of a hill ocean view and no one lived at the house in the trap with the traffic we were just gonna stay in the house the guy said no problem but I haven't heard back from him so we'll see but I get a lot of calls for floating steps so I'll be putting some more up I've showed a lot of people in other states how to do them in every basically when they call me to consult it's for that <laughs> And then they zoom me, and I watch I, I watch everything their contractors doing, and look at the forms, and that's right or do it this way. It's it's pretty cool. Technology's crazy. <laughs> what you can accomplish. That's what I'm saying. The younger guys who jumping in this, there's going to be a shortage of people doing this stuff. And you're outside, make your own schedule basically. Schedule your jobs demo them yourself pump it it's it's pretty fun i mean it's better than sitting in an office or a warehouse for 40 years 30 years or whatever it's not for me but this isn't for everybody either but if this is what you want to do and this is what you're into concrete's the most money of any trade it's the most rewarding in my opinion because everyone looks at it and there's it's the design like an artist did it you know so for me i like designing stuff and I'm good at delegating men and putting it together. Check that out. I mean, you ain't seen anyone lay that down like that. And we actually have three real finishers and one guy who's learning. So basically, we got three aces and Jonathan, who's going to be up to steam. And I brought a couple labors because I like to clean everything as we're going. I strip everything that day. I clean it as we're going, clean the sidewalk, clean the street. I stack everything in a nice pile on the yard then I get rid of it when I strip the forms pick up all the trash that's just how I like to run it at the end of the day when we're all done I don't want to go oh, let's clean it up it's already ready to go you can do whatever you want that's just how I do it that's a funny trial just keeps them from you can lay it down the first time with that and then you got to get out on there there's my pump right there. I got. I just put a bunch of money in it. I painted it, 
put a new hood that having it down by the beach it just rotted right through the top of the hood i had like four big holes so i wouldn't put a new uh hood on it looks really nice see now that the sidewalk has the, the entry has a step down onto the driveway it didn't have it prior and you could see those fibers in there why anybody would use those on flat work is beyond me or bring those out you can see them they you just can't rub them out they just and there's a crap load of them in there now we're starting to scrub it's starting to go you got to get about two passes good passes on this make sure it's clean then you got to broom most of it from up top but if you got the right crew and you overman it you don't have much to worry about you have experienced guys on there this is just business as usual. You know, that's why so many people that hire me from YouTube have so much confidence in me. And he just said, just do it the way you want to do this. And I said, oh, let's match the house and band it and, and try and keep the era close to it, you know. A sandblast finish would fit it too, or top cast. I mean, that is clean as you're going to get. Some of the best work you'll see is the stuff I do. West Coast does and that's what it's about for me it's not about a popularity contest on YouTube or something but you know that's like being the coolest kid in junior high it doesn't really matter if you get work for it from it and people learn from it that's should be the end goal and this is where I get all my work so I don't have to pay marketing you know I market it and I get paid it's a two for one and you got to put the moon shoes on access like this where you got to get out there and walk on it because there's no other way. Thank you very much for watching The Best in the West. I hope you had a nice memorial.